Ladies and gentlemen, live on the zone from American Airlines Center here in Dallas, Texas, USA. Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing USA in association with Zanford Promotions and Taken Promotions proudly presents the main event of the evening. Champion versus champion. 12 rounds of boxing for the unified super flyweight championship of the world. Sponsored by Air Force Reserve, Bet Online, AutoZone, and JD Sports, sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, Executive Directors Jim Erickson and Gus Calderon. WBA President Hilberto Jesus Mendoza, WBC President Mauricio Suleiman. In position at ringside, the three judges scoring will be Jesse Reyes, Carlos Sucra, and David Sutherland. And inside the ring, in charge of the action at the bell, World Championship veteran referee Luis Pavon. And now, the officials are ready. The fighters are in the ring and they are ready. So for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, from Big D, Dallas, Texas, let's get ready. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner with his trainer, Marcos Caballero. Wearing blue with gold, official weight, 114.8 pounds. In his professional career, 52 fights. 50 victories, including 41 big wins by knockout and only two defeats with five world titles in four different divisions. He's the former mini flyweight champion, former light flyweight champion, former flyweight world champion, the reigning, defending WBA super flyweight champion of the world, Thomas Caballeros de Managua, Nicaragua. Come on, Chocolatito. And across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner with his trainer, Alfredo Caballero, wearing black with blue and officially weighing in the same at 114.8 pounds. His professional record, outstanding with 43 fights, 41 victories, including 28 knockouts, only three debates, and he has two world titles in two divisions. He's the former flyweight World champion and now the reigning, defending WBC super flyweight champion of the world, Thomas Caballeros de Puerto Peñasas de Nuevo Mexico, El Gallo, Juan Francisco Estrada. Ven aquí. Está un poco alto esto. Bájalo un poquito, que está un poco alto. Viene. Ok, muchachos, ya yo le di las instrucciones en el camerino. Vamos a hacer una pelea limpia, eh. que gane mejor. Dios los bendiga. Éxito. To be the man, you gotta beat the man. Can Juan Francisco Estrada be a legend killer tonight? Or will the fairy book story that is Chocolatito's life and career add another brilliant chapter here tonight in Dallas? It's the fight the boxing world has waited eight years for. Juan Francisco Estrada, El Gallo, and Chocolatito, part two. Estrada throws the first punches of the fight. He wants to be first and be last, he said. And Estrada coming out more aggressive now. He's not coming out boxing and punching like he normally does. He's pushing back Chocolatito, making a statement here in this first round. It's Mexico versus Nicaragua. He's the master boxer puncher 
and Estrada versus Amasra cutting off the ring in Gonzalez. Their first fight was at 108 pounds. Chris, this is at 115. What difference will that make? Oh, it makes a huge difference. To get to 108 back in 2012, Estrada had to starve himself over the final days of that week. Couldn't even drink water over the last two to make 108. Now, he's at his most comfortable fighting weight, whereas you can see Chocolatito, the smaller fighter in this weight class. Eddie Hearn, who took a lot of pride in making this fight happen, said, if this fight isn't exciting, I might have to retire. That's how confident he is, and most of everyone you speak to is, that this fight will be fantastic. You know, it's, re it's remarkable. In 2012, the fight between these two took place in the Los Angeles Sports Arena. Gonzalez was fighting for the third time as a pro in the U.S. Estrada making his U.S. debut now. We've got the unified championship on the line and one of the biggest fights of the year. Will this be a slow burn type of fight or will it catch fire early? It'll catch fire early. There's no way it doesn't because it's a high, high octane aggression from Gonzalez. He's always, he's calculating with his aggression, but he's always shifting, always moving his head, always in position to damage. Some people are predicting an Estrada knockout in this fight, but keep in mind, Estrada himself was dropped in his last bout against Quadras. You know, a little headbutt early there. In the first fight, there were three instances of headbutts, so you gotta watch for that. Excellent round for Gallo Estrada, setting the pace and the tone as the boxer puncher in that first round. Come at me. Come at me, bro. Man is a gamer. Must be that nationwide 5G she got from Cricket. Now I got no mercy. I'm scared. More phone, more fun. Give me the towel. Throw the jab, throw the jab, and then throw your right. You know, and then throw your uppercut from the inside. We're just starting, we're just starting. Let's go. Chocolatito in the blue trunks with the gold waistband. Estrada in the black and blue. In the first fight, Estrada started off boxing nicely, but then little by little, it was Gonzalez who started putting the pressure, and that's what he's great at. And Gonzalez does have something of a history of being a slow starter. He was slow to start in the Estrada fight. His last fight, Israel Gonzalez might have won that first round against Chocolatito. He just builds and builds and builds and wears his opponents down. Chocolatito didn't respond to Estrada's, I wouldn't say he was taunting, but he was definitively telling everyone to listen he was going to beat Chuck Latino, probably knock him out. I said, Chuck Latino, please tell me something mean about El Gallo. He said, I can't say anything. That's how nice of a guy he is. But in the ring, he becomes a terror. Good body shot from El Gallo, and then there's Chuck Latino answering with the left. Pressure is what makes Gonzalez great. Oh, good glancing right hand again from Chuck Latino. That straight right hand, that is one of Gonzalez's signature punches when he put Cali to five down a year ago. The 
Estrada works best when he's at the end of that left jab, whether it's a hook, an uppercut, or a jab. Fight behind that jab, keep the distance. Estrada closed as about a two to one favorite in this fight. It's calculated aggression and angles that Chocolatito's great at. He shifts without you even knowing. Next thing you know, he has an angle and he's punching from a different, from a different position. Nice right hand again for Chocolatito in a combination. You have to keep moving and you have to keep throwing punches if you're going to fight and beat Gonzalez. We saw in the first fight, Estrada seemed to run out of gas in those middle rounds. He told us he even thought, thought about taking a knee in that sixth round. He has to be able to keep up with Gonzalez's pace. Gonzalez has Estrada up against the ropes momentarily. And if you notice about Chocolatito, he doesn't pull back his punches. It's from his chin to opponent's chin. to it for round two. At AutoZone, you get what you need when you need it. Got a today job? Pick it up free same day at your local AutoZone. More of a tomorrow project? Order as late as 10 p.m. with free next day delivery. Getting the job done just got easier. You gotta stay on top of him. Throw the right and then the overhand right. Hit him on the chest and overhand right. Okay, just take your pace little by little. You'll start breaking him down. Use your lateral movement. Use your lateral one, side to side. Take on so. Take on so. Wait, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm... Hey, hey. Okay. Believe it or not, Chocolatito told us this fight feels like any other fight. I treat them all the same. I don't think Estrada has the same sort of outlook. He knows what's on the line for him, his career, and his legacy. You know, when he said legacy, Todd, Chocolatitos is secure. He is a first-bound Hall of Famer whenever he retires. But what he can gain in a fight like this is he can establish himself as a truly great 115-pounder. We know he's great at minimum weight, at 108, at 112. He's got some good wins at 115. This, to me, would make him a great 115-pounder. Not to mention he rose from the ashes after being beaten comprehensively by Sorungasai. Many people thought his career was over, but as he's showing right now, it is not. Estrada's doing a good job backing up and countering Chocolatito's aggression right now. The, ref, the judges here in Texas have shown us, though, tonight, they put a premium on aggression. And that's what Chocolatito does so well. He knows how to dissect his opponents with that right hand to the gut, coming up with a left uppercut. Finished high for Estrada. When Estrada's fighting at the end of the jab like that, he's a master boxer. He has the rhythm, the timing, the distance. It's up to Chocolatito to close that distance with his own rhythm, moving his upper body, getting inside, shifting positions, and landing his combinations. The more extreme this fight gets, the more comfortable Chocolatito gets. Keep calm in the chaos. That's what Chocolatito has made a career of. In the first fight, any time Estrada got against the ropes, that's when Chocolatito got off. All the way 
face pressing forward is the Nicaraguan. There's that right hand to the body right there. A little bit low. Straight right. Straight right. Straight, right. Straight right, and he doesn't even pull it back. Like I said, it's from his chin to the opponent's chin. Doesn't load up. Just precision punching on Chocolatito. Now Estrada on the front foot. He's losing it up. He's losing it up. Tienes que caminar, combinar los golpes. Los rectos son los que más le van a entrar, Juan. ¿Sí me entiendes? Por ejemplo, derecha, uno, dos. Tienes que pose yourself on it. Uno, dos. Left, right. Uno, one, two, aquí. one, two. Los rectos son los que le están entrando. Straight, straight punches. Sí, es que tiene que saber ya de otra. No, trata. And here's what I'm talking about. My not pulling back his punches from chin to opponent's chin right there. Doesn't waste any, any movement, any punches. It's a game of inches, and that's the reason it landed. Yeah. Round four Both. scheduled for 12. Unified Super Flyweight World Championship. Chris, how do you have it scored through three? Got two rounds to one in favor of Tito. I thought the first round, clear win by Estrada. Second round, I thought Gonzalez edged it in the third. I thought that was more clear for Gonzalez. Good uppercut. And now they're opening up a little bit more. A little, they were conservative to start. Overhand right. This is where Chocolatito wants to be, and Estrada needs to get off the ropes. Chocolatito uses his entire body to get position. Very sneaky fighter, and alters his attack. And that's where the tide turned in the first fight, when Chocolatito put the pressure on Estrada, kept him against the ropes, and just unloaded combinations on him. Left hand, left hand to the ear for Chocolatito. Chocolatito is an expert at creating openings with his body, with his shoulders, with his forearms. That's how he that's how he becomes so aggressive, but it's calculated aggression. He uses his whole body. Good one two for a strike. Then an uppercut. Senses something here as Chocolatito again with a right. Then downstairs, Estrada answers with the left. Oh, I think one of those right hands hurt Estrada. Caught him again. Eighty punches for the first three rounds on average. There'll be more in this one. And this is what Chocolatito does. He forces you to fight his fight. Estrada started off boxing. He's a master boxer, but once Chocolatito gets going with those combinations and shifting and angles, it's a different story. That right hand got Chocolatito off balance a little bit. The most action we've seen has been here in round four. Just missed with that right hand, Chocolatito. Great body shot there by Estrada. Winging right hand for Estrada to end the hands of Estrada. And that was the right hand I thought hurt Estrada and started to back him up against the ropes again. Good combination we saw in the replay, but I thought that was a really good round for Roman Gonzalez. No, I gave it to Gonzalez myself. Yeah. 
so far a very evenly matched contest. Much like their first bout. A fight that Chocolatito won by unanimous decision, but it was very, very close. Oh, another right hand for Chocolatito. When Chocolatito starts throwing that right hand to the body, that's when he breaks his opponents in half, and then the, the shot's off the stairs line. You assume a fighter, one of these guys is hurt when they don't immediately answer back with punches. That's how often they throw 100 punches in round four from Estrada, 120 for Chocolatito. This is Chocolatito's fight right here. Pinpoint punches. Their last fight, they combined to throw over 200, or 2,000, excuse me. Might be headed towards a similar number here tonight. Nice angle taken there by El Gallo. It's a nice angle that Gallo did right there, but that's that's also what Chocolatito does. He shifts without you even knowing. He shifts while he punches. He adjusts and gets a different side. Big right for Chocolatito stepping in. right there instead of coming with a one two he led with a two and landed that jab that hard jab long jab and now gonzalez warned for the low blow you know how crafty chocolatito is right there barely moving his head making the shot of miss maintaining his position Crafty greatness right there by Chocolatito. Boy, these rounds are flying by. Tell me how you feel. You're getting your rhythm. You're getting your rhythm. Counter punch him when he steps back. You got to be an asshole from this point on. And this is exactly the fight that Chocolatito needs to fight. It's short, precise punches. He doesn't waste space. He doesn't pull back his shots. That's how he gets so many punches, shifting. Shifting and landing those short shots like that. I think Estrada's got to find a way to be Whoa. more aggressive and to be the one coming forward. When he fought well against Sor Rungvisai, that's what we saw. An aggressive Estrada dictating the pace of the fight, not so much in this one. I think the more aggressive Estrada is, the more at home Chocolatito will be. I love the fact these guys aren't pulling punches. Either is our translator, verbatim translation there in the corner. The thing about aggression, Chris, is it's not just like Chocolatito's coming forward without moving his head. He's, he's shifting his feet, his body, his elbow. He uses his entire body to create position to land the short shots. Very difficult to defend against. Chris, how do you have it scored through five full rounds? I've got it four rounds to one in favor of Roman Gonzalez. That's not to say that Estrada hasn't been doing good work. He has. I just like the aggressiveness of Chocolatito. And there's just cleaner shots being landed in these exchanges. Estrada's getting his punches in, but Chocolatito seems to be landing just one or two more, just like that. A very motivated Chocolatito tonight. Cut. 
Estrada doing well. In this round, as Chocolatito's punch output has slowed down. Estrada con concentrating on the body now, which is what you should do with an older, older fighter like this. And something's bugging Gonzalez's eyes. A good round here for El Gallo. of Estrada, then an uppercut. Chocolatino answers back. This is El Gallo's fight right here. Punching backwards, getting the nice counters. No, oh, big left hand for El Gallo again as Chocolatino opens up. Right cross from Chocolatino. Estrada with the left again. What a round here, round six. Gallo Estrada fighting this fight, not letting Chocolatito hold the distance. Rhythm and time is how Estrada does best. The body shots in this round were excellent for Gallo Estrada. He invested in the body that round. And he needed that round, at least according to Chris Mannix's scorecard. Let's go. Give me that one. Give me the water. Give me the water. How do you feel? Don't give up the rounds. You didn't, go, you didn't come here get hit. Let your hands go. We came here to win together. He's yours. Let's go. We came to win. He's hitting you with the, with the hooks to the body. Be careful. Seven scheduled for 12 here at the American Airlines Center, downtown Dallas, Texas. And this fight has really begun to heat up. A very entertaining round six. Both these guys have proven that they can be really effective in the later rounds, especially recently. Joaquin Matito knocked out Cal Yafai in the ninth round. Estrada knocked out Carlos Quadras in the 11th. This is the second half of the fight, six rounds to go. The first half of the fight pretty much seemed to belong to Chocolatito. Can Estrada make that pendulum come in his direction? Oh, a big wind-up right hand that connected. In the first fight, this is exactly when the, the tie changed for Chocolatito in the middle rounds. Seemed like a sense of urgency in the corner of Chocolatito. What were they saying, Sergio, that they're not liking? What? You know, when it comes to Chocolatito, they want more head movement, they want more pressure. Estrada's just not giving them that because he's stepping back nicely with the counter punches. Oh, a big right hand from El Gallo again. He's landing the heavier shots. The relentless pressure that we're accustomed to seeing, seeing from Chocolatito, the craftiness, the greatness. It's a little behind right now because Estrada's not giving him that. He's stepping back. That was an excellent combination by Estrada. Oh, sorry, you can sense these last two rounds. Estrada's really starting to gain some confidence. And it started with the body shot from the last round, and now he's going upstairs. The slightly faster hands of Estrada are beating Chocolatito's timing punches. And now Chocolatito fighting back. This is beautiful fighting right in the middle of the ring, back and forth. Oh, nice uppercut from Roland Gonzalez in a straight right for Estrada. 
And this is Chocolatito, what should be his fight right here. He's comfortable in aggression. Great combination by Estrada. This fight is looking exactly how he thought it would look. Breathe in, breathe in. Breathe in. Just settle down. Breathe. breathe. You're working well. Estrada's working nicely, keeping the range. Those shots right there are easy for the judges to see. They're taking an effect on Chocolatito. Chocolatito got hit too much in that round right there by uppercuts, right hooks, left crosses, everything. I think that was a round where Estrada really found his home. And the headshots look pretty, Sergio, but don't forget about the body work that El Gallo is doing. The last two rounds, it's the, the investing in the body that has been the difference, and that's oh. why the tight's changing for El Gallo. Round eight. Sergio, do you sense that a knockout is in the cards? In the last two rounds, I sense that Estrada has uh, landed the better shots in Chocolatito. He's not as aggressive as he normally is. He's a crafty, aggressive fighter coming forward, picking shots with always his combinations. But Estrada's landing the cleaner, harder shots, in my opinion. Left hook from Chocolatito. In the last round, these two fighters combined to land 95 punches. Nice left hook from Estrada. Estrada just missed with a big right hand right there. Let's take a look at Chris Mannix's scorecard through seven full rounds. Well, the gap has closed after those last two rounds. Gave the last two to Estrada, dictated the pace, landed the cleaner shots, did great body work. This fight really can swing like a pendulum one way or the other at any point in time. Estrada doing a good job keeping Chocolatito at the end of his punch. It's hard to see because of the lights, but there are very distinct portions of this crowd that have been standing on their feet since the opening bell. They have not sat down. Estrada backing up Chocolatito now, which is something that we didn't see in the first fight. You're Estrada, that's where you want to be. Make Chocolatito the counter puncher in this situation. I don't think we saw Chocolatito back up or get near the ropes in the first fight. Estrada being very comfortable pushing him back. Well, this is what Estrada said this week. He believes that his strength is going to be the difference maker this time around. At 115, he feels he is the stronger, fresher fighter. He is three years younger than Chocolatito. Leading into this fight, we knew that Estrada was going to be favored you know, physically because of his age, but the old, older legend is favored tactically. Left hook there from Chocolatito right on the chin. Toughness and tenacity is what makes Chocolatito, but we haven't seen that the second half of the fight just yet. When he comes in, throw your right. When he comes in close, throw your right. 
Afuera de la cintura, engáñalo. Solito se va a abrir para. He's in front of you. Faint him and then throw your hands. Vamos, vamos. Aquí para allá todo el rato, estoy a pibito. No se preocupen, acá vamos a ganar limpio, Dios. Don't worry about it. Do your job, we're going to win. Put him up, set him up with your left and throw the right. Just throw the hook. Two world-class fighters giving us another world-class fight. Round nine, scheduled for 12. A rematch eight years in the making. The momentum seems to have shifted towards the Mexican Estrada. They just don't stop punching. On pace to throw over 2,000 punches combined. Chocolatito, though, Chris, seems to have slowed down a little bit. He has, and this is the distance that Estrada wants to keep the fight in. This walk, that phone group type of fight, that favors Chocolatito in those exchanges. You give a little bit of distance, Estrada's the longer, taller fighter, better opportunities. CompuBox punches through round eight. 777 thrown by Estrada, 824 by Chocolatito. The accuracy of Chocolatito is something that's changed since that first fight. The first fight, he landed 40% of his punches, power, jabs, all of them. Last few fights, he's been right around 30, 35% with that, that accuracy. Estrada ranked number nine in Chris Mannix's pound-for-pound pound ratings. He'd certainly move up in the list with a win tonight over this legend. And if you're talking Tito, you get back on that list, I believe, with a win. You believe you make the list. Not everybody's list. Chocolatito finding his rhythm now, finding his combinations. The accuracy is returning to Chocolatito. Chocolatito has been in this position so many times over his career. No panic. Knows what is required. And that left hand did the trick there. And another short shot from Roman Gonzalez. And this is the pressure that fighters have a hard time keeping Chocolatito off. Non-stop punches just like that. Good one-two from the Nicaraguan. Another super fast round as we approach 10 seconds. What's going on? Oye, wait. Hey. I think we're losing. We're going to the 10th round. You know, we may, have, we may need the knockout. We're down in the cards. You, you have balls. We have three more rounds. It seemed a bit more dire than you would think in the corner of Estrada, Chris. Yeah, I have Chocolatito up by one point. It certainly feels like anybody's fight with three rounds to go, but I can understand the mindset of the corner. These rounds have been close. Chocolatito has been the aggressor. 
you have really got to go out and try to definitively win these final rounds if you're a strong. They said you might need a knockout. It wasn't just win the rounds. It was knock this guy out. I disagree. I don't think he's there yet. Many people predicted a late stoppage for Estrada, maybe an 8, 9, or 10th round KO. Will that still be in the cards? This is Chocolatito's fight right here. Varying his attack and his speed. That's where Estrada doesn't want to be against the ropes, because that's where Chocolatito gets off his combinations. Start to the round again for Chocolatito. To the body with the right. And that's his money punch. That's when you know he's comfortable, when he throws that right hand to the body and starts the combinations from there. And Sergio, could that advice from his corner where they said you may need a knockout, can that actually hinder their fighter? Maybe Estrada's looking to load up for one power punch. Possibly, but I don't think that was the, the right advice to tell you, Chief. This is a close fight. It, it could be fight for either way. Good left hook for Agallo. By telling your fighter that Gallo is forcing to, to come forward and, and, and fight Chocolatito's fight, the aggressive fight. It really is fun to watch Chocolatito. I mean, he was one of the best fighters from 2010 to 2020. Here we are in 2021, and he is looking like one of the best fighters in the world still. Counter right hand for Estrada. It's those short shots right there that make Chocolatito so great. They're hard to stop. They're uppercuts, they go down, and then he shifts positions, gets an angle, buries his attack and speed. Would you like to see Estrada go back to the body more? I think Chocolatito just firing, he's firing away. He found his home now. This is the aggression that Chocolatito feels comfortable with. This is a really good round for Chocolatito. Non-stop punching. It's been the calling card of Chocolatito for his entire career. Said he started fighting when he was 14 years old. And now we get set for the championship rounds. How do you feel? Put the pressure on. What round are we in? We're going to the 11th round. So you have two more rounds. Just let your hands go. Two more rounds. That's it. There's two more rounds. Give me two good rounds. When I hear them say, be aggressive and let your hands go, I'm thinking that's what he's done for the last 10 rounds. That's all he knows. They want more. They want more, and Chocolatito can always give more. Two rounds to go. The unified Super Flyweight World Championship hangs in the balance. Can Estrada get revenge? Or will it be Chocolatito who establishes and cements his legacy at both 108 and 115 pounds? Oh, a nice right from Agallo. Is there still some late drama to be had here? This is Gallo's fight right now. A little bounce on the step. Fighting behind that jab. An educated left hand. as well as Chocolatito is fighting, he can be hurt and he can be stuck. We saw that against Sol Rungasin.
is fighting at this distance, he's got to let his hands go a little bit more. Be patient, chop at that body, and then come back upstairs. Good counter right hand right on the ear of Mastrata. Triplatito has been busier this round. Ooh, nice inside right hand for Triplatito. This is the fight that we're expecting right now. Both of them landing big shots now. I mean, how good is this? Beautiful boxing, guys. Beautiful boxing, I both. To still be able to throw this many punches in round 11 is just incredible. It really is poetry. They make each other barely miss and come back with counter punches. It's a back and forth ebb, ebb and flow. Another great night of box fighting here on DAZN Matchroom Boxing with American Airlines Center. We'll be back right here in Texas, just down the road in Fort Worth, as Maurice Hooker takes on Virgil Ortiz Jr. That should be sensational as well. Hondo. He just told me to do it right here. He just, he just told me to do it right here. He just told me. Well, Juan Francisco Estrada may not have needed a knockout a couple of rounds ago. On my scorecard, he does need one, or at least something big in this final round. Chocolatito probably has the same mindset. Go forward, advance, throw punches. And I'm being told they have broken the 2,000 punches combined throw mark. Just what we expected. As good as it gets. Estrada and Chocolatito. Estrada's going to have to dig deep here. We saw him do it in his last fight against Quadras to get a knockout in later round. Does he have it in him against the fighter of a different caliber? I just think Chocolatito found his comfort zone now. And we really haven't seen him hurt Sergio. We've seen him hit a lot. We haven't seen Chocolatito hurt this one. Neither man's really been hurt. They'll be feeling it for days and weeks afterwards, though, I'll tell you that. And look at this. They're throwing caution to the wind. I'm humbled watching both these greats, I'm telling you. The subtle, the subtle greatness of Chocolatito is, is just, I'm in awe watching him. Short little shots like that doesn't pull back. Keeps Estrada in check. Chocolatito as good as ever. Estrada may need something big here with under a minute to go. We know he's got the power to do it. Oh, and right hand from Chocolatito and another one. Hands are down for Estrada. He's welcoming these punches so he can counter. But right now. Chocolatito on the front foot. The crowd is on their feet with 40 seconds to go. Chocolatito's going to 
exchange, Estrada's got to be ready to exchange right back. This is what Estrada wants. He needs openings. They both claim victory, but there can only be one Sergio. What say you? You know, I think El Gallo forgot about the body when he started finding success there. He let Gonzalez fight his fight towards the end. I think Roman Gonzalez won this fight. Well, the judges are going to be the one that decides. So let's take a look at the three here. Jesse Reyes, a very experienced judge, been judging fights since the late 1990s, world title fight since 2005. He has some history with Chocolate Tito, was ringside for the rematch between Gonzalez and Sor Rungbasa, as we know, there was no need for judges in that one. Carlos Sucre has been judged since 1984, scored the super bantamweight title fight between Juan Carlos Payano and Rashid Warren. Wide for Warren, the only judge to give the fight to the ex-Olympian. That tells me he favors the more effective puncher over the busier fighter. And David Sutherland, he has been judging fights since 2002. Boxing fans might remember Paul Malignaggi's fight against Juan Diaz back in 2009 when Malignaggi unloaded on the judges after losing a unanimous decision. Sutherland was one of those judges. He also scored Breakus McCaskill one wide for McCaskill. Both those cards indicate that Sutherland likes aggressive fighters. After every Little League baseball game, your coach always says, well, did you give it all you had? I don't think anyone ever has to ask either one of these fighters if they gave it all they had. No way, that was an old master with, versus a younger technician in El Gallo. Brilliant performance, just nonstop punching. It really is humbling watching both these guys fight. Michael Buffer has the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds, a round of applause for one of the best fights you'll ever see in your life. And these two warriors in the ring at this time. We go to the scorecards. Jesse Reyes scores the contest. 115, 113 for Gonzalez. Carlos Sucre scores it. 117 to 111 for Estrada. David Sutherland has it, 115, 113. Split decision, winner, El Ganador de Mexico. The Aurora Campeón Unificado, the WBA, WBC. You know, you can't argue with a close scorecard like 115-113. 117-111 for Estrada, that's pretty wide. I had it 7-5 for Chocolatito, but 117-11, 11 that's just, I, I don't know what we're looking at, but we are in Texas. We've seen this before, I, I don't know what to say. Calling it ringside, it felt like Chocolatito did enough. Nevertheless, there he is. And still the champion as Sarisaket Sorungbasai perhaps awaits him. But you know Chocolatito will want a trilogy here. 
He felt very confident after the fight, as did his corner, that they did enough to win. But he's one of the nicest guys on the planet. You're not going to see him complain. You see he's smiling right now. He gave his best effort. But in the end, apparently, it was not quite enough as El Gallo gets his revenge in Texas. Sergio, take us through the highlights. Well, we're going to welcome the trilogy. We can get some good news there. But for right now, we got to appreciate what, you, what we just witnessed. We expected these guys to throw a lot of punches, and Gallo came out boxing on the back foot. Landing some good body shots, and this is one thing that he didn't take into the second half of the fight were the body shots. Chocolatito started getting on the inside, getting, adjusting his game plan with the uppercuts and the body shots himself, backing up El Gallo. And that's what the judges here love in Texas, is what fighters going forward, and that was Chocolatito for most of the time. Back and forth, excellent combination punching. This is where Gallo was at his best, when the distance, fighting behind that jab, landing those clean shots right there, not letting Chocolatito inside. Clean punches by Gallo Estrada. Chocolatito coming forward. These are highlights. This is all El Gallo right here. But they ended like champions. Over a thousand punches each once again. Champions fighting like champions in the championship rounds. Keep in mind, in between round nine and 10, I believe, it was El Gallo's corner. Right. Not only telling him that he needed to win the rounds, they were telling him he probably needed a knockout. And you could see sort of the reserved look on the face of Estrada. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but he seemed at least a little bit surprised himself. Either way, Juan Estrada retains his titles Let's look at the CompuBox numbers. A weight class record for total punches thrown. The poor guys at CompuBox thumbs are probably about to fall off right now. Estrada landing 314 to 391 for Gonzalez. Like I said, the good news is we're probably going to see a trilogy just in the little giant footsteps of Chiquita Gonzalez and Michael Carvajal. I mean, this is what we're probably going to witness next. Well, I will say this. On a day that we lost a boxing legend in marvelous Marvin Hagler, this fight would have made him proud. Absolutely. I mean, this is exactly his mantra. Uh, he, he likes to go forward, throwing punches, seek and destroy. And now we send it into the ring and Chris Mannix. Juan Francisco, congratulations. You get your revenge. This is all, the fights between you two are always going to be close. When the final bell rang, did you believe you won the fight? Felicidades, que ganaste la revancha. Las peleas entre ustedes dos siempre son cerradas. Tú crees que hiciste todo por, para ganar? Sí, la verdad me sentí muy bien. Me sentí muy bien. Eh, creo que merecí la, la, la victoria. Gracias a Dios se dio el resultado. Pero Roman González es un gran peleador y se merece una tercera pelea. Yeah. I think I did enough to win. Chocolatito is a great fighter and I think he deserves the trilogy. We'll get to that. Before the 10th round, your corner told you you may need a knockout, that you were behind on the cards. Did you feel you were behind? Antes del décimo round, tu esquina te dijo que tal vez tenías que noquearlo. ¿Tú sentías que ibas atrás en las tarjetas? Eh, la verdad sentí que iba muy pareja, no sabía si muy a, a, abajo o arriba, pero sí sentí que iba pareja, por eso apretamos los últimos dos rounds. Yeah. He said, I knew it was a close fight. I didn't know if I was up or down, but I needed to make uh, close out the fight the last two rounds. What kind of adjustments did you make during the fight? ¿Qué ajustos hiciste durante la pelea? Eh, bueno, eh, si él me tiraba dos o tres golpes, yo tenía que tirarle cuatro o cinco para, para notar un poquito más la diferencia. If he threw two or three punches, I'd have to return two or three punches as well. In 2012, you had to really shrink down to 108 pounds. This was a more natural weight for you. How big a difference did that make? 2012, you had to bajar mucho peso to ser el de los cientos, el peso del 108. Te sentiste diferente esta vez? No, sin duda. La pelea pasada en el round 6, 7, yo... Quería ya abandonar la pelea porque andaba muy débil, pero el corazón de Guerrero nos, 
nos hizo aguantar toda la pelea y ahora me sentí muy bien y aparte venía muy bien preparado. The first time I had a difficult time with a with a weight, so I felt a little weak, but I'm at my weight and I feel I felt a lot better this time around. You have two titles right now. Officially, you owe Sor Rungvisai a world title shot. But you just said you'd like the rubber match with Chocolatito. Which for you comes first? Tienes dos títulos ahorita, pero le debes la revancha a Rungvisai. Y estás platicando tú que quieres la trilogía con, con Chocolatito. ¿Cuál pelea quieres tú? Bueno, eh, de hecho, eh, Rungvisai es el, el mandatorio, ¿no? Es la pelea que sigue. Pero sin duda estaría una tercera pelea muy buena con Román González, pero después de Rumisai. Rumisai es a mandatory, so I'll look at that, but I'll, I'll approach a third fight any day with Chocolatito. Congratulations, Juan. Gracias. Felicidades, Muchas Juan. Gracias. gracias a toda la gente que está, que está aquí. Arriba Peñasco, arriba Peñasco. Y arriba Peñasco, arriba México, arriba Sonora. Ah! We're going to bring in, we're going to bring in Chocolatito, Román. It was a tough fight, but did you believe you won it? Fue una pelea muy dura, pero sientes tú que tú ganaste la pelea? Muy buena noche a todos. Dios me los bendiga. Pasó lo que tenía que pasar. Yeah. Whatever happened had to happen, but I gave it a good fight. Estoy muy feliz con el resultado, no importa lo que sea. I would have been happy either way with the result. Eh, hice un buen trabajo. I did my work. La grandeza de Dios no es mía. La grandeza de Dios no es mía. Yeah, the only guarantee is from the Lord. El rey soberano, el que le debo todo es a él. Everything that I have, I owe to God. Bendito sea Dios. God bless God. Watching from ringside, this felt like round 13 between you two guys. How different, if at all, did it feel from the first fight? Viendo la pelea de, de fuera del ring. Era el round número 13. ¿Qué tan diferente era esta pelea a la primera? Bueno, esta fue mucho mejor que la primera. He said if it was a better fight than the first one. Me sentí gozoso. Siento que gané la pelea muy bien. I felt strong and I felt I won. Cerré, la, cerré el último asalto con uno mejor. Yeah. In the last round, I gave it all. It was a great round. Oye, pero Dios quiso así. That's what God wanted. The result is what God wanted. Estoy feliz porque voy a, a ver a mi familia. And I'm happy because I'm going back home to see my family. It is now 1-1 between you and Estrada. You heard him say he wants a third fight. Do you want a third fight? Va una ganada, una perdida, van empatados. ¿Tú quieres la tercera? La doy a la gané. I want both of them. <laughs> Ahora lo que queda es... Servirle a Dios. Ahora lo que queda es buscar más de Dios. Whatever God wanted, okay. and whatever He wants, we'll do it. Estoy feliz porque lo, lo que Dios me ha regalado, el talento boxeo. Yeah. So I'm very happy with my performance. Y disfrutarlo con cada uno de ellos. And enjoy and have the crowd enjoy the fight. Well, you're always entertaining, Roman. Thanks for the great performance, and hopefully we see you back right here soon. Gracias, siempre da un gran espectáculo. Gracias, Chocolatito. No, 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 gracias a cada uno de, a cada uno de ustedes. Dios me los bendiga. Say, thank everybody in the public and may God bless you all. Busquemos a Dios mientras, mientras tengamos vida. Dios el que todo lo puede, el que todo lo sabe. Tengo la unción de Dios y por eso estoy feliz de estar con cada uno de ustedes. I'm blessed by the Lord and that's why I'm so happy. Nicaragua, muchas bendiciones. Blessings to everyone.